the same time as the first side shoots appear, pruning should take place. This consists in the elimination of some of the aforementioned shoots, which in turn will improve the ventilation of the plant. Due to the use of pruning techniques, the number of stems per plant will be determined. Between one or two stems are frequently left after pruning, although with respect to cherry tomato plants, three or even four stems may be left on the plant. With the incorporation of crop training, the plant is kept upright, which improves the general ventilation of the plant and provides optimum conditions for plant growth and the undertaking of cultivation procedures. Approximately 30 days after transplanting, flowering begins. The first flower cluster develops once the plant has three true leaves in the leaf axils. The rest of the inflorescence will be located every two or three leaves up to the growing tip of the plant. Another important task is desuckering, which consists in the elimination of axle shoots and is carried out weekly throughout summer and autumn and every 10 to 15 days in winter. In order to gain optimum benefit from pollinization, a beehive of Bombus terrestris should be placed inside the greenhouse at the beginning of flowering. Approximately one and a half months after transplanting, ovary development commences, which leads to fruit being formed. From this moment onwards, and depending upon the stage of advancement of the crop, the water requirements of the plant will increase. Therefore, watering must be adjusted in line with the evapotranspiration of the crop. During the fruit development stage, brusque changes in humidity levels should be avoided as diseases could appear such as the splitting or cracking of the fruit, amongst others. The growth period of the fruit from flowering to ripening will depend upon crop conditions that will vary generally between 45 to 60 days. Under normal conditions, the main stems are trimmed once the plant has between 6 to 10 branches. In this way, the plant will produce both larger and earlier fruit. With the view of facilitating ventilation, improving fruit colour, deleafing is undertaken, which consists in eliminating both the old and diseased leaves. This task should be carried out extremely carefully in order not to remove any of the leaves acting as a source of photoassimilates to the inflorescence and the fruit. With respect to nutrition, the importance of nitrogen-potassium ratios varies throughout the growth cycle. There are a one-to-one -one ratio from transplanting to flowering and a one-to-two or even a one-to-three ratio during fruit picking. Phosphorus also plays an important role during the stages of root taking and flowering. This is due to the fact that it plays a vital part as regards root formation, flower size and the regulation of pH. Another fundamental element related to tomato nutrition is calcium, which facilitates the prevention of apical necrosis or opposita. Fruit picking may be carried out at different stages of ripening, depending upon market requirements. It is advisable to pick fruit in the early morning, and then, if possible, to refrigerate the fruit.